So just about two weeks ago, the Dallas Cowboys made Dak Prescott the highest paid player in the history of the NFL with a brand new four-year $240 million contract. That's $60 million a year against their cap. And every time I see a quarterback sign one of these mega contracts, I always think to myself, what if they would have gone a different route with the quarterback, draft somebody, somehow replace him, and then use $60 million on their supporting cast? Would that have been a better off? And everybody always tells me, no, you're crazy. It's so hard to find a franchise quarterback. But if you look at all these different examples we're seeing around the league, like with the New York Giants, who paid Daniel Jones, and that cost him Saquon Barkley, and we've seen how good he's been with the Eagles to start the year. And then we've also seen the value of low-cost production from the quarterback position with the Texans and CJ Stroud or Stroud playing good football on his rookie contract allowed the Texans to go out this season and get Joe Mixon, get Stephon Diggs, get Danielle Hunter and make the Texans a Super Bowl favorite. And also we've seen other times where these contracts have gone completely south in other ways. For example, Joe Burrow, on his first year after signing a five-year, $275 million contract, he had multiple injuries and missed almost the entire season. Or just recently, Tua Tagovailoa, right after signing a four-year, $212 million contract, he had his fourth concussion and is now contemplating retirement. What if these teams would have gone other ways and would have built a super team around whatever quarterback they would have replaced their guy with? And truth is that this isn't just a hypothetical question. And this isn't just me. There's actually one team who's taking a completely different approach to the salary cap and to building their roster than anybody else in the NFL. And I think they've been quite successful. Let's get into it. Well, there is no doubt that the instant Super Bowl contender players, such as Pat Mahomes or back in the day Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, were definitely worth keeping around. Other players who aren't necessarily going to instantly make you a Super Bowl contender, are they worth these mega contracts? And there's one team that time and time again has told their players, we're not giving you a mega contract, go take someone else's money and we'll replace you and get even better production. This is the Minnesota Vikings. Right in 2018, they had star running back Latavius Murray. And two years prior to the, to the end of his contract, they thought ahead and they drafted somebody in the second round to a cheap four-year, $6 million contract, Dalvin Cook. They let Murray walk. Murray went and signed a four-year, $14.5 million contract with the Saints. Well, Dalvin Cook outproduced him. And then a couple of years later, they did again with Stephon Diggs. Diggs wanted a big contract. They said, okay, we'll trade you to the Bills. The Bills signed him to mega year, mega four-year, $96 million contract. And then with the very pick they got from the Bills, the Vikings turned around and drafted a receiver, signed him to a cheap four-year, $13 million contract. That receiver is a guy by the name of Justin Jefferson. Not sure you heard of him. Then they did it again a couple years later. Adam Thielen wanted a big contract. They said, no, go, walk in free agency. Thielen went and signed with the Panthers, three-year, $25 million. They went ahead, drafted a guy replacing Jordan Addison, four years, $14 million. If you look at the veterans that walked compared to the rookie replacements, the first two years on the team, the first two years, the veterans put up 5,554 yards and 33 scrimmage touchdowns versus the rookie replacements in their first two years put up 7,552 scrimmage yards. That's almost 2,000 more and 57 touchdowns. That's 24 touchdowns more than these veterans. And all of that, well, the Vikings saved $27.7 million a year. They're paying $27.7 million less and getting significantly more production. Why isn't every team in the NFL doing that? This past offseason, the Vikings took it a step further. They had Kirk Cousins and Danielle Hunter, their top pass rusher, both due for new contracts. And they said, no, we're not paying you. Go play for someone else. Take someone else's money. The Falcons signed Kirk Cousins to a four-year $180 million. That's $45 million a year. And Danielle Hunter signed with the Texans for two years $49 million. That's $24.5 million a year. 
Meanwhile, the Vikings moved around some picks to move up from picks 11 and 23 to 10 and 17. With those picks, 10 and 17, they drafted J.J. McCarthy, their quarterback, to replace Kirk Cousins, signed him to a rookie year deal, four years, $22 million. And at 17, they drafted Dallas Turner, or edge rusher, to replace Hunter, signed him to a rookie deal, four years, $16 million. Between those two, they saved $60 million against the cap per year. And between that $60 million and what they already had, a couple other moves they made, that brought them up to above $85 million in salary cap space. And this time, the Vikings didn't just sit on that money. They spent $35 million to lock up Justin Jefferson, their one in eight billion, their one in eight billion talent. As we mentioned earlier, the one in eight billion guys, yeah, they're worth signing. They locked up Justin Jefferson through 2028. And then they fixed up their defense. In 2023, their defense ranked 16th in terms of yards. And like, that's okay, but that's not going to go win you a division. That's not going to win you a Super Bowl, especially with all the competition going on right now. So they got, spent $48 million on their defense to bring in Stephon Gilmore, Jonathan Greenard, Shaq Griffin, Blake Cashman, and Andrew Van Ginkle. Between those five and Dallas Turner, that's six new high-end starters on the defensive side of the ball. That should completely change their defense. However, Jim Koisi Adolfo Minazzo wasn't done there. He cut $15 million worth of offensive veterans, such as Josh Job, Alexander Madison, and a couple other guys to clear up some space. They went ahead and he signed Aaron Jones and Sam Darnold. And the Aaron Jones signing makes a ton of sense. However, Sam Darnold signing raised a bit of a question mark. Because Sam Darnold hasn't been successful in his career. However, I made a video about it back in June. If you look stage by stage at his career in college, he was very successful. Then the NFL, he went into a horrible system with no offensive line. Adam Gates, they went to Carolina where we've seen quarterback after quarterback fail and then leave. Like Baker Mayfield's a franchise quarterback now on the Buccaneers. Or oh, Bryce Young, who's the first overall pick, he's struggling in Carolina. Sam Darnold, you can't blame him for struggles in Carolina. If you look at the results before he came and after he came, compared to the results when he was on the Panthers... He made the Panthers better. And then he went to the Niners. And it's a backup to Brock Purdy there. But still, we saw Shannon rave about him compared to Steve Young. Talk about his pure throwing the football talent. And how much potential he does have. And then we saw him play in the preseason look very good. We saw him play in that one game against the Rams. He looked good despite playing with the Niners too against the Rams once. Almost won that game. Sam Tarnold, if you look beneath the surface, there's a lot there. There's potential. I'm not going to say that he's just going to come out and be a good quarterback because we haven't seen that. You can't say that that's for sure going to happen. That he's a good quarterback. However, there's definitely a lot of untapped potential. And the Vikings and Kwesi Adolfo and also GM and his staff did an incredible job recognizing that. And they signed Sam Darnold to a very cheap deal. And so far, he's looked so good. So now, that's six new guys on defense and two new quarterbacks. And they're paying less than they would have if they had re-signed the guys. And, well, all these hypotheticals and talking about cap space and stats are very nice. What matters in the NFL is results, is wins. Are you a successful franchise? And we'll at since 2018, the first time they did this strategy of go take someone else's mind with Latavius Murray. Since then, the Vikings are 45-38, and 38, which is a 54% winning percentage, which makes it above average on paper. However, they only have one playoff win, which is just, that's not going to cut. That's not acceptable. However... Quizzy Adolfo Minaza and his staff only came into the building in January of 2022. So, three out of five replacements, let's call it, have happened since he entered the building. So, let's look at his results. In his first year, the Vikings went 13-4 and four and ended up losing a silly playoff game. In the second year, in the second half of the season, Kirk and JJ went down. So, you can't really judge that second half of the season. So, he's really 17-8 and eight with an 0-1 record in the playoffs. And... Just to start, that's pretty promising. And then most of the moves were done this past offseason. The brand butter was done this past offseason. So I think that the true test, the true teller is going to be these next two seasons, the 2024 season and the 2025 season. And while it's only been two weeks, let's look at what they've done so far in the 2024 season. Their defense dominated the Giants. They said that they felt bad for Daniel Jones. Then they went out and they beat the 49ers, one of the most complex schemes in the NFL. Brock Purdy literally approached their defensive coordinator and told him how stumbled he was. After letting their top pass rusher, Daniel Hunter, walk in free agency, they leave the NFL with 11 sacks. Without Daniel Hunter. Daniel Hunter who? 
On the other side of the ball, Sam Darnold came into the season with a career quarterback rating slightly under 80. So far, his rating with the Vikings is 111.7, including on this last in this last game. He had a magnificent, magnificent game-winning drive in which he completed a big pass on third and long, 26 yards to Jalen Naylor to set up a game-winning touchdown, but another guy who they just brought in, in Aaron Jones. If you look at Kirk Cousins, meanwhile, after signing a big mega contract, his quarterback rating coming in was over 100, and he averaged two touchdowns per game throughout his career. So far with the Falcons, his quarterback rating is 89.7, and he's scoring 1.5 touchdowns per game. Darnold is producing better than Cousins, while the Vikings are paying him $40 million less. Getting better quarterback production for $40 million left is genius. It's a huge advantage. So to sum things up, the salary cap today in the NFL is $255 million. We see 16 quarterbacks. That's exactly half the teams in the NFL are getting paid $40 million or more. Then we also see receivers getting paid $30 million. We're seeing edge rushers get paid in the 20s and 30s as well. So if you can find a way to get production from these positions for $5 to $10 million, that gives you a $20, $40 million advantage at every position. That can give you up to an $80 million advantage if you play your cards right. So if the Vikings continue to find ways to get this done, to replace Danielle Hunter with Dallas Turner, to replace Diggs with Justin Jefferson, to replace Kirk Cousins with J.J. McCarthy and Sam Darnold, they're going to have the most complete, well-rounded, and deepest roster in the NFL for years to come. And they might not win every single Super Bowl. They might not have that Pat Mahomes guy who you want to give the ball to in the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. However, they're going to be a top team consistently year after year after year. And in my opinion, this is going to be the equivalent to the 2002 A's. And this is going to change the entire approach of building your team. Because if this guy, such as Tua or Daniel Jones or even Dak Prescott, is it the type of guy who you think can go out there and instantly win you a Super Bowl? There's absolutely no reason to give him north of $20 million. And the Vikings have shown that, and I think that other teams are going to slowly but surely catch on, and we are going to see the quarterback market crash. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Like and subscribe.